think you know the Phantom, the scooter that changed everything in 2021 is no longer enough. The world have moved forward and so have we. This isn't just a version 5, it's not a facelift, it's a total reinvention. In this four part series, we're pulling back the curtain on the rise of our fastest, most advanced scooter yet, from first sketch to final test ride. The Phantom 2.0 comes in two trim, the 52 volt and the 60 volt Stellar Edition. This series is about how we built the Stellar, the flagship. This story is how we reimagined a legend. Welcome to the Apollo Phantom Stellar. Looking at the data, one thing became obvious. Phantom riders don't hold back. Average cruising speeds were north of 25 miles per hour. Spikes regularly cleared 32. Controller temp hit 125 degrees Fahrenheit on sustained climbs. And despite all of that, riders keep pushing. This wasn't casual commuting. This was high performance riding every single day on a scooter that was never designed for that kind of abuse. So no, a few upgrades weren't going to cut it. We had to tear it down and start it all over. And for us, this starts with one word, Mac 3, our next generation controller. Doubling the discharge capacity of the Mac 1, designed for instant torque, precise modulation and sustained power delivery, the 60 volt stellar trim is 6.7 kilowatt peak and in real world testing it accelerates from 0 to 30 miles per hour in just 4 seconds. That's faster than a lot of 72 volt scooter out there without giving up control. But speed alone isn't enough. So we went with 4 piston hydraulic brakes. The kind of stopping power that feels overbuilt until you need it. And then there's a the suspension. Some rider bomb puddles. Other carves clean lines. So we gave the Stellar fully adjustable hydraulic suspension. Standard late mount tuned for customization. And finally, tires. This is a speed first machine. So we wrapped it in 11 inch street slick with low rolling resistance and high grip. Minimal drag, maximum confidence. Because when you build something this powerful, everything matters. From the rubber on the road to the controller under the deck. But the real hero here, the designer who had to take all this chaos and make it beautiful. Uh, so yeah, the first thing we tackled was posture. Uh, the day before was solid, but it had that upright utility built silhouette. Uh, this time we wanted edge, uh, we wanted movement, confidence, we lowered the deck, uh, we raked the stem forward, uh, tightened the overhang. Um, we gave it a more aggressive riding triangle, uh, something that looked fast even when the scooter is parked. That was the, like the main goal. That new posture wasn't just cosmetic, uh, it meant re-engineering the frame from scratch. We went full uh, unibody with machine precision and all the, the key stress points that gave us some kind of uh, trouble before. We integrated the folding assembly, we minimized the welds and cleaned up uh, the silhouette. Uh, yeah, from a point of view, everything flows now. Uh, from the stem to the deck to the rear arm, like it was sculpted and not just assembled. Same philosophy applied to the suspension. Uh, the before came with a custom spring setup, no tuning, no upgrades. But on the stator, it uses standard length hydraulic shocks, right? Uh, which are fully adjustable. Uh, so in case you want to swap in uh, air shocks or heavier uh, dampers, just go for it. And we also have all this uh, technology coming from the Pro, the lining overhaul. Uh, the before had your basic headlight and tail, and the stator has true 360 degree visibility for the first time. So we have integrated turning signals we have uh, a stain lighting and even the DOT 2.0 display, which is uh, embedded somehow right into the chassis. Uh, and this means no glare, no seams and fully waterproof. So to me, it's like we have this uh, traffic grade technology and that's an extra in terms of safety. That's what separates design from decoration. This isn't just about how it looks, it's how it works, how it lasts. It's design that respect the riders. We had the vision, 60 volt, Mac 3, fully system integration, but making it real, that's where engineering takes over. The first thing we had to do was rethinking the controller architecture from the ground up. Mac 3 isn't just a performance bump, it's a completely different electrical and thermal footprint. We're talking about double the discharge capacity compared to the Mac 1 controller. We've came a long way. That meant everything around it had to scale up. 
wiring, cooling, even motor housing tolerances. And the feedback from Phantom V4 rider made it clear. People were pushing their scooter hard. One rider told us the power is amazing, but it runs out after a while. So we designed the scooter for sustained output and not just peak burst. That's why the Mac 3 controller, the anodized orange block you see in this exploded view, is thermally isolated from the battery. We built in an aluminum heatsink, high efficiency thermal pad and direct frame contact for passive cooling. No fans, no gimmicks. Just clean thermal design. The motors, they're not just stronger, they're smarter. They're now sensor equipped, constantly feeding back temperature, phase and RPM data to the controller. That's what enabled PRS, our progressive response system. It let us fine tune the throttle behavior in real time. So acceleration feels smooth, not binary. Less like flipping a switch, more like rolling into torque. And to power all of this, we built a new battery system from the ground up. A 60 volt, 30 amp power pack using 21700 cell, the same format used in EVs. These cells don't just store energy, they deliver it without sagging even under extreme loads. At 6.7 kilowatt peak output, that does matter. We also redesigned the battery structure itself, no more shrink wrap pack. This battery pack is built in an aluminum housing filled with fire retarded gel. It's safer, stronger, and better for the long haul. From there, we layered in a 360 visibility system. Brighter, more protective turn signal, and smarter redundancy. If one light fails, others will compensate. It's the kind of detail you don't notice until it saves you. Even things like plug and play motor connector came from real rider pain. Before, you had to open the deck just to change the motor. Now, the connector is located right next to the motor to make it easier for you to service tire or the motor itself. It's fast, simple, and smart. Every engineering decision in Stellar came down to one question. If the rider notice it, it should feel premium. And if they don't, that means we got it right. When we say the Phantom Stellar is the most advanced scooter we've ever built, we mean it. It's not just powerful, it's intelligent. It's the foundation of everything we're building from here on out. This is the best thing we've ever built, but we didn't get it right overnight. The first Phantom wasn't just a scooter. We weren't known, we didn't have a factory. What we had was a community believing in us. Over 10,000 riders bought into that vision. And you rode, you shared, you gave your feedback. You helped us build what's next. This isn't just our next scooter, it's a product of you years of riding, testing, braking, fixing, and believing. To everyone who ever owned the Phantom, thank you. You made this era possible, and we built the Stellar to honor what you started. This episode was about vision, what it takes to imagine a scooter that doesn't just outperform, but outclasses. But vision is just a start. Next week, we leave the screen and enter the shop, where prototype breaks, welder sparks, and where real testing starts. See you in episode two. So like 37 degrees in the factory. Mac 3 controller. So